All right, uh, we're at uh, chapter 28, Magnetic Fields. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, share the PowerPoint, and which starts off with a, a runway. Why does it start off with a runway? Well, it's showing you, uh, this particular one is called 35R, and runways are designated by the, um, uh, by the compass, compass points. So uh, the, uh, there's 360 degrees in every, you know, every circle. There's 360 degrees in, uh, uh, 300 in the compass points. And so runways are labeled anywhere from 1 to 36, uh, 36 being uh, north. And the way they come up with uh, compass uh, runway numbers is you find the, the compass direction that's closest to uh, the direction that your runway is pointing in, and you round it up to uh, the nearest 10. So this one is 35, so it, it, it's rounded to 350. So it could be anywhere from 346 uh, to 354, rounded to, uh, 350 and you drop the last digit so that's why they go anywhere from uh, 0 1 to 36 uh, this particular one is uh, 35 35 R what does the R stand for well it means that there's more than one uh, uh, runway so it could be left or right or it could be uh, left center or right so if it were uh, left it would be 35 L center it would be 35 C this one is 35 right now on the other side, it's um, 170, 180 degrees out. So on the other side of this runway, you would see 17. Now whether it's L, R, I, I don't know what it is. I don't, not familiar with this uh, runway. But it's a, this is a way of introducing um, magnetic, uh, the magnetic uh, compass points uh, on. Uh, uh, since we're talking about magnets, so um, here's a here's a magnet. We're all familiar with magnets. They have a north side and they have a south side. Uh, the uh, we think of the uh, magnetic field lines, the green, uh, the magnetic field lines emanating out from the north and terminating on the south. And there's always a continuous loop. Uh, you notice the little. Uh, brown dots with the brown arrows that would be as it like if you had little compasses uh, if you had uh, placed a little compass in those particular areas you would get uh, the the needle of the compass pointing in this particular particular, particular direction um, so uh, they're just showing you the shape of a magnetic field we uh, early on I think one of the first experiments that we did uh, in 2426 was the uh, equal potential lines, and we did a, uh, a, a a demonstration using iron shavings sprinkled on top of magnets, and you should have gotten shapes that look like this. As a matter of fact, here's uh, the what they would look like, uh, or what they should have looked like. Here's a magnetic field pattern surrounding a bar magnet, and you can see how they it it follows that shape that's. Um, that's shown here you, on this uh, A, you can see that it, uh, the magnetic field lines um, are, have that particular shape. Now here's two different bar magnets, a magnetic field pattern between opposite poles, north, south of two bar magnets. Um, north uh, is on the bottom and south is on the top. And the, uh, um, if you sprinkle on it, you get this pattern. Now, if you put, if you were to put two norths or two souths together, uh, you would get a pattern that looks like this, where you uh, see them opposing each other. Magnetic field pattern between light poles of two bar magnets, and and you can remember that we did um, we did electric field lines for uh, electrons and um, uh, protons, and you could. You can imagine a proton sitting by itself and an electron sitting by itself, and you could draw these uh, these uh, field lines emanating from the 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 
a proton or from a positive charge and going into a negative charge. And so we had these isolated uh, charges. Now, can we have isolated north and south? So if you break a magnet in half, uh, will you get a north on one bar and a south on another bar? No, you get a new magnet. You get a north-south on the one bar and on the other bar, you get another north-south. Uh, there are no such things as magnetic monopoles. Uh, whenever you break a, a magnet, you get a north and a south. Now, are they looking for them? Yes, they are looking for magnetic monopoles. This is an article from Physics Today uh, in October 2016, as late as October two, 2016, and it's an article on the search for magnetic monopoles by Artu Rajanti, is the way I'm gonna pronounce it. I don't know his proper pronunciation. Uh, but read the subtitle, The Discovery of the Mysterious Hypothetical Particles Would Provide a Tantalizing Glimpse of New Laws of Nature Beyond the Standard Model. So they're looking for magnetic monopoles. I can't predict whether they'll find them or not. I don't think they will, but I could be wrong. But the point is that they're searching for magnetic monopoles, but they're, uh, so far they, they don't exist. Uh, so if you break a magnet in half, you're going to get a brand new magnet with a new north and south. Now, here is the Earth's magnetic field. Uh, now, notice uh, if you point, if you have a magnet and you have the north uh, facing you and you bring a compass towards it, what's going to happen to the north needle of the compass? It's going to point away. It's going to be deflected because like magnetic poles repel, unlike magnetic poles attract. So if I have a, a magnet holding the north here and I bring a compass, the north is gonna turn away from it. If I turn it around and have the south, the, the north needle will point towards it. So if you're holding a compass and it's pointing north, what is at the geographic north pole? A south pole. Look at the figure. If, um, if, if unlike charges, if, uh, unlike um, magnetic poles attract each other, then there has to be a south pole at the geographic magnetic north. Um, so it says, let's read the, this little graphic here. The north geomagnetic pole is near the Earth's uh, north geographic pole. Now, um, the south geomagnetic pole is near the Earth's south geographic pole. But look at the bar magnet that they show superimposed on the Earth's magnetic field. There's a south at the north magnetic pole. Um, so it's the north geographic pole, the north uh, geomagnetic pole, and uh, there is a little deviation, uh, but notice that it's a south it's a south pole at the uh, north geomagnetic pole. Now, uh, the, this is a very beautiful donut shaped, you can imagine a donut of magnetic fields uh, surrounding the earth. And so this is a very idealized picture. This is more the reality of it. You get the solar wind pushing on that donut uh, the, uh, the shock wave from the solar wind pushes the magnet, the earth's magnetic field to one side. And you even get to the point where, where they, they, you, you see the green lines, the green lines are the magnetic field lines. The red lines are where the magnetic field lines actually break and they wrap around, um, and they reconnect. On the other side, magnetic reconnection. This is not in your book. This is, I know this from having worked at Southwest Research. As a matter of fact, the article this is taken from, from Physics Today, uh, I forget what, uh, uh, I think it's February, just February of 2019, um, this article appeared. Um, and I've lost my, uh, oh no, I know what I have to do. Uh, let's do this and go to the other. Uh, um, there, here, now I, I should catch up. I, uh, this is from a, uh, a NASA, from a, a Physics Today article, February 2019. It's discussing the 
NASA's Magneto, Magneto, MMS mission, the Magnetospheric Multiscale Mission. It's four satellites. It's a formation of four satellites. It's trying to observe the, the magnetic reconnection. And I think they've had some success. One of the authors was Jim Birch, my very first vice president at Southwest uh, Research. He's still vice president out there in division in the space sciences uh, uh, division. Anyway, this is more the reality. They show you this nice donut in the uh, uh, in, in this above. This is more the reality. It's pushed off to one side, and you get uh, uh, this lopsided magnetic field, and it actually breaks on the solar wind side and reconnects on the the other side. There's a whole science about magnetic reconnection. Uh, you don't have to know anything about magnetic reconnection. I'm not going to test you on it. It's just information. I find it very interesting. Uh, let's see. Okay, so uh, particles. You, we have protons, we have electrons. How do they act in a magnetic field? Well, the magnetic force uh, on a charge is proportional to the charge Q of the particle. Uh, the magnetic force on a negative charge is directed opposite to the force on a positive charge moving in the same direction. Uh, we'll come up with a right-hand rule that shows that. The magnetic force is proportional to the magnitude of the magnetic field vector B. Magnetic field will be uh, lines of, of uh, magnetic field and uh, represented um, uh, by lines, and it'll be the, the B field, the magnetic field. Um, so here we have the magnetic force. Um, Let's see, we have the uh, a proton, the red vector it's, is its velo velocity, the green vector is the magnetic field, and you can see that the force is upward. The magnetic force is perpendicular to both uh, V and B. Uh, the magnetic forces on oppositely charged particles moving at the same velocity and magnetic field are in opposite directions. So you have a... a, a uh, uh, magnetic field um, B, you have the velocity of the positive particle, um, the, so the velocity is upward, so the force on the positive particle is, uh, let's, we'll, we'll call it into the page, you know, which is toward the back. Now look at the negative particle, it has the same, same velocity, and it's uh, out of the page, it, uh, it's coming towards you. The, uh, so for the positive particle, it's into the page, and negative particle, it's out of the page. Uh, so the, for, the magnetic force is the charge times V cross B, the velocity uh, times the, the cross product of the velocity um, times the B field. Um, now, I'm going to skip this right-hand rule. They have it. I don't like it. Uh, I'm going to go to this right-hand rule. I prefer this right-hand rule. Uh, you point your fingers in the direction of the B field. So uh, most of the time we're going to look at a uniform B field. Um, and so velocity is the velocity of the particle. Uh, now, if it's a positive particle, think of palm. The palm of your hand, it's positive, P and P. Palm is, starts with P and positive starts with P. So you put your fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. The, your thumb is in the direction of the uh, velocity of the particle. So the force on the particle is from coming out of the palm of your hand. So that shows you the force. Um, now, it doesn't have to be, I, I'm showing it here like 90 degrees. Here's the B field, here's the velocity. I'm showing it like it's 90 degrees. It doesn't have to be, it can be 30 degrees or it can be uh, 60 degrees. Uh, it doesn't really matter. There's a, the plane is going to be made up by the uh, V cross uh, V field or the V cross B field. Now, if it's a negative particle, it's going to come out the back of your hand. Um, just think of it as opposite. Uh, so point your fingers in the direction of B with V coming out of your thumb. Uh, the magnetic force on a positive particle is in the direction you would push with your palm. For a positive particle, palm. Okay. Um, particle in a, in a field magnetic, V cross B, uh, some approximate magnetic field magnitude, strong superconducting laboratory magnet, 
uh, 30 Tesla, a strong conventional laboratory magnet, two Tesla medical MRI unit is 1.5 uh, Tesla, a bar magnet, 10 to the minus two, um, surface of the earth, five times 10 to the minus five Tesla. Uh, inside the human brain, due to nerve impulses, is one is 10 to the minus 13. Okay, uh, so since it's a cross product, the force V is the absolute value of the charge, whether it's, it's positive or negative. It's V cross B, which is VB sine theta. Uh, that's how you get the magnitude of the, the force. Uh, so it's QVB sine theta. Uh, and one Tesla is equal to one Newton uh, divided by Coulomb meters per second. Okay, and one Tesla is also equal to one Newton uh, uh, ampere meters. Uh, if, if Coulombs, if, if amperes is Coulombs per second, you can see we have um, Coulomb meters per second. Uh, you take Coulombs per second as ampere, um, you can see that you can one Tesla is equal to either one Newton per Coulomb meter per second or Newton. Uh, per ammeter per amps uh, times meters. Okay, uh, one Tesla is about ten to the minus ten to the four Gauss. Uh, so there's a, a thousand Gauss uh, in one Tesla, and uh, most of the time you're gonna uh, when in the laboratory you wanted to measure magnetic field, we would ask for a Gauss meter. We wouldn't ask for a Tesla meter. We would ask for a Gauss meter. Uh, that's uh, uh, okay, let's go. Well, a quick quiz. An electron moves in the plane of this screen uh, toward the top of the screen. So electrons, an electron, so that's negative. A magnetic field is also in the plane uh, of the screen and directed toward the right. So you have uh, the magnetic field going this way. I, I don't know how it looks to you. I'm just doing it the way I see the screen. Magnetic field going this way. The electron moving toward the top of the screen so the direct the um it, since it's a negative particle it's coming out the back of my hand so it should be out of the screen let's see if i got that right yes out of the screen um all right so here's a comparison of electric and magnetic particles in uh in field let's see in field models okay uh, the electric force vector so for uh, in, uh, the electric force vector is in the direction of the electric field. The magnetic force vector is perpendicular to the magnetic field. The electric force acts on a charged particle regardless of whether the particle is moving. Magnetic force acts on a charged particle only when the particle is in motion. Uh, electric force does work in displacing a charged particle. Magnetic, magnetic force is associated with steady magnetic field does no work when a particle is displaced. The force perpendicular to the, the displacement of its point of application. Um, the magnetic force associated with steady magnetic field does no work when a particle is displaced in the direction of force perpendicular to the displacement, displacement of its point of application. Okay, let's see. Um, so here's, Oh, let me catch up with my notes. I'm, I don't slide them, and so I, I get behind because they talk about sample uh, examples. Um, so you have the uh, the B the B field of velocity for a positive particle. You can see that it's up. Uh, and examples of this V cross B is an ion moves in a circular path in a magnetic field of a mass spectrometer. Uh, a coil in a motor rotates in response to the magnetic field in the motor. A magnetic field is used to separate particles emitted by radioactive sources. And in a bubble chamber, the particles create, created in collisions follow curved paths in magnetic fields, allowing the particles to be identified. We'll see that there's others. Uh, the, in the, the solar wind, there are charged particles, um, and there are charged... Uh, well, I may have jumped the gun. I thought it was going to show you Aurora, but that may be uh, later. Okay, well, we'll, um, we'll stop it here.
because I think uh, I, I've jumped the gun. Uh, this is the end of section 28.1, probably a long lecture, I apologize.